So what do you do with your own human waste when you're going off-grid? In this episode of The Drive Home, that's what we'll be talking about. So, when you're out there trying to decide what to do, you know, you have several options. You know, traditionally, you know, of course, you know, research your own codes, laws, you know, restrictions in your own property, your own state, your own county. But uh, traditionally, you know, the thing that's been used for hundreds of years is a good old outhouse. You know, basically, you know, that just where you dig a hole in the ground, you put a little building over it, and you use that. Another option Actually, I can't say for the most part. If you have the money and it's, you know, maybe it's required, you know, this is what people use and they use a regular septic system, which they basically, you know, it's a big tank underground where the waste digests using enzymes and whatnot, and then it you know, drains out into the ground. Now, what's been gaining popularity quite a bit in the past you know, 10, 20 years are composting toilets. You have, you know, little do-it-yourself ones with buckets, sawdust, you have you know, a couple of other different ones. Uh, some name brands that come to mind are uh, Nature's Head, um, Sunmar, and then uh, one that I've recently noticed was Sea Head, and that's more of a, uh, a compact one. Possibly, you know, easier to use, more user friendly. It's, you know, of course, a lot smaller, so you'll probably have to empty it a lot more often. But it's more for like more confined spaces. You know, if you're just in an RV or something like that, and you don't want to worry, worry about emptying a black tank. You, know, you just put one of those in. And then the other option that's kind of popular is a. Um, incinerating toilet. Now the incinerating toilet, what's cool about that is it, it literally incinerates it. It burns it up. All that's left is ash. And with that ash, you can you know, put it in your compost pile, till it into your garden, anything like that, because it's just ash. It's pure carbon. You know, it's really good for plants, and it's just a very small amount that you have to worry about. Now the downside to those is you need some kind of source of heat to actually produce the, the the flame, the incineration process. A lot of times that's propane and that just adds up to another cost. And if you're off grid, you're, you're trying to watch your budget, that may not, not be something that you'd be interested in. And something I do want to look into a little bit, just a curiosity, is I wonder if sometimes it kind of gets baked in to the little uh, the catcher of the pot, whatever you want to call it. You know, like a non-stick pot that's lost its non-stick and you just sit there after scrape the food off. I wonder if that happens. But anyways, I'll have links in the description down below for a couple of the uh, composting toilets and maybe even incinerating toilet or two. If you want me to go more in depth with any of these, you know, waste systems, whether it be the composting toilet, the outhouse, the septic system, or even the incinerating toilet, go ahead and uh, leave a comment down in the comment section. Uh, of course, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down there as well. And uh, out of curiosity, what do you guys use? Do you use a composting toilet? Do you use an outhouse? Do you find the closest bush? Or, in certain circumstances, the farthest bush? Go ahead and let me know that as well. And uh, if you are enjoying this content, you want to keep up with you know, the questions for you know, potential off-graders, hopefuls, 
or even newbies or even if you're just you know, checking it out, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications icon so you don't miss another video. Until next time, keep kicking up dust. Which is it?